dead head in all of these daffodils. They're looking quite worse for wear this year. The slugs have had an absolute field day with how wet it's been, but they've still brought quite a lot of cheer to the plot. It has been the coldest, wettest April that I remember in a long time. It's been really, really windy. We've had the tail end of um, Storm Kathleen, I believe, and it's just been absolutely horrendous. So I've not really been at the plot too much to enjoy all these flowers, which is a bit of a shame. But like I say, they are really looking very, very tatty, and I keep finding little slugs and snails hiding inside them as well. So it's always good to deadhead your daffodils anyway. So you can see this little bulb at the end of the flower here, that's it's trying to make its seed. So we want to be chopping these off so all of the energy can be redirected down into the bulbs ready for next year's blooms. I'm actually going to harvest some of the ones that have just fallen over as well. So some of them actually did survive the slugs but they've flopped down in the in the wind and the rain so they've got lots of um, mud splats all over them so they're just looking really really tatty all around these daffodils but they do still smell amazing The next up on my job list is to tie in this rose to the back fence here because you can see this big gap here between mine and Fred's plot. And I'm slowly starting to fill this little gap that we've got in between our borders. I'm growing some honeysuckle, some jasmine, that crab apple tree has taken over quite a bit of space. But this rose um, I think could actually provide me quite a bit of privacy this year if I can <laughs> untangle it and get it tied to the fence. I want a pretty painful part of my plot wedged in between a thorny rose bush and a hawthorn tree behind me. So, not the easiest of tasks. Ah, okay, we've split these up. I'm just gonna snip some of these hawthorn branches because they're stabbing me in the back right now ah ah the beautiful smell over here and i don't know what it is the hawthorn's not open yet so it's not that might be the crab apple blossom but it's still in bud so i'm not sure what it is but it smells lovely spring smells I'm going to thread this one through here and back up again and try and train it and just try and use this fence to train it rather than string. Yep, last piece. Right, let's go to the back of the plot because I've got another honeysuckle and rose that needs tying in as well. Oh, my herbs feral. Looking lush, isn't it? All of the uh, forget-me-nots as well. They're all looking great. Forget-me-nots have such a rad way of telling bees are full of nectar. Can you see this yellow centre here? As these flowers get pollinated and the nectar levels decrease, the yellow colour fades to a white, essentially telling the bees that there's not much left. The eucalyptus still needs taken in. It's a, a little bit of wonky donkey. But all of the cherry blossom as well. Look at this. Lots and lots of buds still to bloom. Spring is here. Anyway, let's go to the back of the plot and see how. Oh, currants. Look at those. Look at all of those flowers. Oh my gosh. This is a. This is a pink currant. And uh, I'm definitely going to net this when they start ripening because um, I've never actually had a harvest from this bush here because the pigeons and the birds always get here before me. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of netting around it just about a week or so before they start to ripen. Right. The honeysuckle, look. 
This was literally just a little tiny cut in a few years ago and it's absolutely taken over this fence here. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? And it's also wrapping around my kitchen area as well. <laughs> it looks lovely, doesn't it? So the honeysuckle has wrapped itself all the way around the kitchen and it's created a nice little frame. It looks really, really beautiful, I think. So the rose that's trying to drape along the fence is looking a little bit worse for wear, so I'm going to try and pin it up, but I'm not actually sure that I've got anything suitable. Right, so this one is um, just against this back fence here. So this is what we're dealing with. This uh, very, very long vine here. And uh, to be honest, I think I'm going to need some tacks and nail some tacks into this fence. So the honeysuckle actually wants to make it go straight and then trail it along the top of this remaining little gap in the fence here. And then the rose, I'd love to make it so it's horizontal and um, have a really long wall of roses along here. Because there's another rose at the end down here as well. Uh, where is it? There we are, little one here. So I'm going to do the same with that and trail it this way. Uh, and then I've got jasmine that also needs staking in. This is growing quite well actually. It's all starting to leaf out now. So I really do want to get this trained against this back fence pretty sharpish. I think we've got a couple of more things down here. Clematis as well. So this fence should fill out quite nicely in a, in a couple of years once it's all established. I just need to get a move on with getting it all staked in. So I'm pleased to announce that the great tips are nesting again in their little box and I couldn't be more stoked. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to intrude on them and show you inside, but I've seen the the mummy and the daddy great tits flittering in and out. And I've also got some more very exciting news. In the shed earlier, I was getting some pots out and I noticed a little robin's nest. And oh my gosh, it's the cutest thing. There's five eggs in there and it's just adorable. She flew out as soon as I went in there. Um, and that's why that's how I noticed that it was in in a little pot underneath the table but yeah they're just in this greenhouse here there's lots of holes so I think well, it's, a, it's a right tip in there and it's not in use I was going to clean it out but now I'm just going to leave it as a robin shed um, but they're actually underneath you can't see because of the reflection but they're actually underneath that table in a pot um, I shall report back on that as soon as I have another update Yeah, it's looking all right in here. Nothing, nothing in the beds yet. I still don't trust that there's not going to be another, another frost, so I'm going to leave it until the 1st of May before I start planting things out. I haven't really got much further on this pond. I've made another level to it, but um, I need to get some liner for it, really. And actually, I think I might make it a little bit deeper, but I, I'm struggling because um, I'm hitting the roots of my big larch tree now. I think I'm going to stop digging because... Yeah, I'm starting to expose some of the roots down here. But it should be a big enough pond now. And I've still got beds either side of it. This one needs sorting. I might actually do that now, to be honest, because all of these are starting to bolt. And I might harvest this for tonight's dinner. I pegged this down a bit too well. There's absolutely loads in here dying it down. Some of this is pegged down with plants as well. This is Woodhaven's. The roots smell well a bit like mud but <laughs> you can get that clovey scent for it as well i've got loads of raspberry canes coming up through here and i think i'm going to move them because they're starting to pop up absolutely everywhere on the plot which i don't really mind too much but um when they're here they're proper arch over the pathway and um, i get tangled in them every time my hair gets stuck in the thorns all the time so oh slug so I think I'm going to move them. I'm just going to harvest these shoots and use them as sprout and broccoli. You can do that with most brassica shoots, to be honest. They're pretty delicious. So many massive bees around at the minute. So nice to see them back. Oh, 
<laughs> I put a, <laughs> I must have put that pin straight through a spud. I might just replant that. It's alright that. <laughs> awesome. Try not to forget about him. Alright, that is all of the netting unpinned now. These weeds will die off. Right. I'm just going to remove most of these by hand because they'll come up quite easily. It's quite good soil, this. that's most of the weeds hand poured. I'm just going to chop these brassicas off at the base because the roots will still continue to feed and fortify the soil. So I only ever chop them off at the base. The insects and the fungi will do their work to break the rest of it down. There's a few rogue potatoes in this bed but you know what I might just I might just leave them. Get a couple of stray potatoes at the end of the season. Oh, my hand is still bad. I hurt my hand quite badly last year. I had about 12 weeks of physio and it didn't really help. Now I'm on to acupuncture and it's still, uh, it still hurts, so I'm not really sure what else I can do, but I can't stop using it, so I just grin and bear it. <laughs> it does hurt though. Right, so these raspberries I'm going to have to dig up now, I think, um, and relocate them because otherwise I have another big bed of raspberries, which doesn't seem too bad, but um, I've got plans for this side, so yeah, I'm going to find a little spade now. And uh, oh, there we go. Oh, there's a smaller one here. It's quite a good clump, that. I don't know where I'm going to put these. Might just pop them over at the back there. One, two, three, four, five canes so far. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Another potato, that's a purple one. Definitely keeping him. Why did I put that potato? That first one. I said I was going to keep safe. Oh, I just stepped on it. Fuck's sake, Danny. Oh, where should I put those raspberries? I've got quite a lot.